August 24th, update of my death plan. To Sarah, I leave my collection of priceless medieval texts, teapot collection, and Costco membership. To my mother, all of my art, the Deathling Den Facebook group, and that one Starbucks gift card. And finally, to my beloved, I give my heart. Excised from my corpse, cleaned, soaked in wine, padded with vegetable fiber, dried with aromatic tinctures, and tied up in an oilcloth baggie before being placed in a reliquary until which time they die, and my heart shall lie with them in the earth for all eternity. End tape. <laughs>a European noble person in the 16th or 17th century, heart burial, or burying your heart separately from your body, might have been part of your death plan. Now, a separate heart and organ burial did take place in the Middle Ages, perhaps most famously in the 12th century, where Richard I, aka Richard the Lionheart's body, organs, and heart were buried in three totally different places. The Middle Ages were magic! Ooh, pitchy. The Middle Ages were magic! There we go. But the idea of having your heart buried separately from your corpse really became a thing during the Counter-Reformation. The Counter-Reformation was magic! The 17th century saw heart burial become something of a tradition amongst religious people of means, shall we say. Rich. Rich people. There are numerous reasons why a person might want to have their heart buried apart from their corpse, but it seems that the primary reasons were spiritual, political, and romantical. Spiritual. If you were wealthy, you probably had multiple religious sites and locations that you patronized and supported during your life. So you might want to have your body buried at one religious site and your heart buried at another religious site far away. This would allow your remains to honor more than one religious site and more than one religious order. Because your body was so valuable because you're so rich. Additionally, if your corpse and your heart were buried in two separate locations, that meant more prayers. And more prayers meant less time or no time in purgatory, that place of painful purification that Catholics have to make a pit stop in on the way to heaven. So good intentions aside, there was certainly a self-serving aspect of heart burial. Okay, so pray for my skull over here, and then my pancreas over here, and then my spleen here. Thanks. Politics-wise, if royalty or nobility gave their heart to a location, it was like offering valor and courage to the people, a representation of the nobility's self-sacrifice. It was the giving of one's very soul. Heart. In the case of Richard I, the distribution of his body, heart, and organs also denoted his territory. And of course, some speculate that all this heart fervor had to do with the struggles and crises plaguing the Catholic Church at the time. Those Protestants. Oh. But what about the romance? In 2014, the body of Louis de Quengo, a noblewoman from Brittany who died in 1656, was found buried in a lead coffin with the embalmed heart of her husband, Toussaint de Perrien, placed atop her, like a cherry on top of the death cake. Louise and her husband were buried separately. Toussaint was buried at a convent he founded 125 miles away, but they were each buried with each other's hearts, not only accomplishing the tasks of honoring two separate religious sites, like we talked about, but also demonstrating how strong their bond was. Additionally, there was a practical element to the preservation of Toussaint's heart. He died seven years before Louise, so in order to preserve the heart for Louise's eventual death and burial, it was embalmed. Yes, there was a version of embalming in the Middle Ages, as transporting a corpse long distances and ye olden times without refrigeration would get gross. So how to embalm a heart? Okay, generally speaking, and keep in mind there's more than one way to embalm a heart, after blood vessels were severed from the heart, it would be carefully opened, cleaned, and in some cases soaked in wine or oil of turpentine. The interior of the heart would be padded with vegetable fiber, grain, or some such material to maintain its shape, and the heart would be placed in more grain or vegetable fiber to dry out. 
In King Richard's case, there was mercury and tree resin in there. The heart might then be covered in aromatics, placed in an oilcloth pouch, and then sealed into a reliquary. And from there, it would await burial. Heart burial mostly fell out of fashion, but it didn't stop. Chopin, Thomas Hardy, and Percy Shelley all had their hearts separated from their bodies post-mortem. Chopin's was kept in some cognac in a Polish church, Hardy's was buried in a small churchyard, and Shelley's went to his wife, Mary Shelley, who kept it in a bag in her desk. Queen. So there you are, deathlings. Heart burial. God. Country. Romance. Suck it, Protestants. Remember, you will die, but your embalmed heart will go on. Huge announcement time before the light goes away. Myself and my colleagues, Sarah and Louise, have been working for months and months and months on a brand new death podcast. <laughs> it's called Death in the Afternoon, and the first eight episode season is going to be released in October. And it's stories and histories and myth debunking and funeral industry insidery stuff. Caitlin, I see you're doing some crowdfunding. Isn't crowdfunding for when you're small and scrappy and just starting out, and then you prove yourself through the years and gain followers and work with advertisers and brand deals? Uh, no, not when you make death content. I have over 500,000 subscribers on this channel and I have never once ever been approached or even considered for any brand deal or any collaboration. And that's okay, I'm not complaining because we are 100% funded by you directly on Patreon. No one except you makes these videos happen. For this podcast, we wanted to make it good quality, and that means an engineer, editor, composer, studio time, designer, months of research and writing. And to be honest with you, we were so ready to sell out, get those mid-roll podcast ads, but the big companies that sell advertising on podcasts just ghosted no response won't work with us. This is not a woe is us tale. Everyone struggles to fund big projects. And I've always said the way my content is treated makes you all even more passionate about it. And no pressure, but I know if you're able to give a small amount of money, you will. So link is down below. Uh, being eaten by the sun. Either way, I hope you'll listen to Death in the Afternoon and enjoy it. And you'll always have my heart, literally. Here's my embalmed heart. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Those Protestants, ooh.